Uncensored. Uh, my first question for you, I guess, is an obvious one. What do you hope to achieve from our conversation? Uh, that right there, being uncensored. In American media, it's very censored. It's, it feels like an episode of Black Mirror a lot of times. So I've put myself across the line, the, po the point of no return, saying, hey, I know they're going to say whatever they want about me. They're gonna, and when I bring up the truth, they're going to say, you didn't get enough sleep. It's because of your health. They're going to call me names for my truth. But these experiences that I'm telling you about are factually things that I've went through and things that I refuse to keep going through and things that I'm not going to let my children go through and things that I'm got, not going to let my peers go through. No pun intended. <laughs> Well, look, we are most certainly uncensored on this show, yay. And I want to give you the time and the platform to really explain yourself, uh, because I think that sometimes sound bites about people, uh, perhaps taken out of context sometimes, can create a very distorted view of what a person really thinks. Um, what do you think, looking back over the last few weeks in particular, what do you think have been the biggest misconceptions about you? Well, I think there's a left agenda to silence anyone that goes against the agenda. Let's go back to uh, Trump running for office back in 2015. Everyone that was around me in my industry, in the entertainment industry, told me that my life would be over. I would be on the wrong side of history. I've even had threats to my life for wearing the Trump hat. And it, it even ended up in, you know, destroying my family and also uh, making it where I have to raise my children differently because I actually am uh, a person that's classified as black. You know, I classify myself as Jew, uh, but uh, a person that's classified that had been given that title in America as black in America that... I'm supposed to stay in a block of a vote. You never heard the term white vote. So why is there a term black vote? How is that OK? It sounds just as racist as a black drinking fountain. And I'm my dad, you know, called me. He said, you know, the thing that the left fear about yay or makes me the most dangerous is I'm rich. And that's the point. Tupac told me back in the days, you know, you had to get your money right and, and then you go to war. So. I'm going to war. You know, I don't I don't have I don't have endless resources. I only have like maybe, you know, honestly, only maybe one hundred twenty million dollars in my account. But what I'm not going to let happen is I'm not going to let my kids take over Yeezy someday and have a boardroom telling them what to do and talking behind their back. I'm not going to let that happen to my children. So I have to fight right now. And the other powerful icons in black music, when they were at the top of the game, they didn't fight at that point. They were too afraid of losing whatever they had. So by the time they wanted to make a difference, by the time Bill Cosby wanted to buy NBC, he didn't have the Cosby show at that time to be able to stand up when they wanted to literally throw him in jail, you know, where they actually did throw him in jail. So... People have to understand just the bravery. There's so many people everywhere. I know everyone can relate to being afraid to say what you're going to feel because you feel like you're going to, you know, you're going to lose something. So whether you agree with me or not, I believe people are going to feel the fact that someone is brave enough to say something. Every day I do five things that people have been historically killed for every day and it's just yo i want to prove first of all i am jew also the 12 lost tribes of hebrew do the math do your research on it 
we have got our culture ripped from us and then told we were just simply void of color, which is another definition for black. But if we knew we were a culture and knew we were a people the way the Jewish people know, then we wouldn't abort ourselves. We wouldn't shoot each other dead in the streets and then rap about it. We wouldn't uh, brag about you know, having sex with each other's wives. We would keep our families together and we would do business together. The most dangerous person for a uh, most dangerous place for a black person in America is actually in our mother's stomachs because 50 percent of black deaths a year in America is abortion currently. I mean, I can keep going, but I want to make it. Hey, boom. Well, yeah, well, no, ask me listen, questions. I, I, Let's yeah, go. I don't, I don't want to jump in too much because I, I, here's what I honestly think. I think you have an extraordinary yeah. mind. You have a, a number of extraordinary talents. You're a musical genius. You're a, a fascinating public figure. Uh, what has been interesting to me is to watch the furore which has erupted in, uh, in the last few weeks over a series of statements that you've made, which have caused, as you know, a lot of offence. And I guess before I get into them, I'm just curious as to whether you think there is a line for free speech. I Listen, I completely agree with you that there is a war against free speech, that people are you know, treading on eggshells all the time, uh, terrified of expressing honestly held opinions in case they get cancelled. I think we're living in a really insidious era where liberals are behaving like fascists. So on that, you have absolutely my agreement. But my question for you is, do you believe there are limits to free speech? And if they are, what are they? There are no limits to free speech. It's all context, right? Tarantino can write a movie about slavery where actually him and Jamie, they got the idea from me because the idea for Django, I pitched to Jamie Foxx and Quentin Tarantino as the video for Gold Digger. Uh, and then Tarantino turned it into a film. But in that film, he puts a context, he, he creates a context where Leonardo DiCaprio is allowed to use the word most multiple times within that context. So Hollywood's job is to frame things and they allow what context, what, what content is accepted and what's not. We have our thoughts that, you know, everyone has thoughts and ideas and then people try to manipulate your thoughts and ideas in order for humanity to move forward. We have to be free to think and then to actualize. I like the word actualize mm. better than uh, execute. If you think about it, execute, it's a negative, negative word. Actualize to be more positive, except for the fact that it has the word act in it. <laughs> and everyone's an actor, especially in Hollywood. I mean, as a, I'm like top five writers in human exist in human history. So I really get into the way the power of words. And I feel very akin to Capote, Freud, um, uh, Nikolai Tesla. Uh, da Vinci, Matisse, more Matisse than Picasso, more African cubism than Matisse. Uh, so I just do that. I throw out that kind of for the liberals. And that's the funny <laughs> thing. It's like uh, well, liberals well, 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 let, me, let me hold you up on that. On, on Matisse, <laughs> when, you say you're more, when you say you're more Matisse than Picasso, as somebody who's a fan of Matisse and Picasso, actually, I spent a lot of time in, in Saint-Tropez where they all used to paint together. Um, why do you say Matisse? What is it about Matisse that you feel an affinity with? I think I feel like Drake is more Picasso and Ye is more Matisse. When we talked about when me and Drake went to do the show last year uh, for prison reform and to bring awareness to the uh, incarceration of Larry Hoover, mm -hmm. I sent him articles about the relationship of Matisse and Picasso and the need for these people. You, you need to have that, you know, I need to go into the bar and go to Starbucks. That's a, you know, that's a form of a, a modern day bar, right? And just hear Drake song playing back to back. And Drake needs to go into that same Starbucks just in a different city and see people wearing Yeezys. And it puts us both back into the studio. 
And, you know, God sets up these almost similar characters, these doppelgangers. It makes me it makes me really realize God has a sense of humor. Like, why is uh, John Galliano and Mark Jacobs the exact same human being just just placed in a different place? Or why uh, does God have it where Bernard Arnault cannot purchase Gucci, not even through the Chinese market? God does this to remind us that we are not God. Because when you take people like Elon Musk and Bernard Arnault and uh, Trump or uh, Jack Ma, uh, Putin, you take these people in their own space, in their own environments, you know, we can start to feel like gods on earth, but we are nothing in comparison to God. And we are here actually to love one another and to collaborate and to make the world a better place. There's, you know, 1% of the world are placed in power and 99% of the world are the audience. So that 1% of the world, this idea of a United Nations, this is the world that needs to come together. This is the world that, I mean, here's the obvious go-to. Biden doesn't listen to Elon Musk. The president of the United States does not have meetings with Elon Musk. Hmm. That is Hey, here, come, 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 come get me. That's retarded. I know I'm not supposed to say that, Biden, but that's retarded, Biden. And and, I, you know, it's um, and obviously because I've been deemed with mental health, all this, I have the right to use whatever words that I like to use. Well, that's interesting. So, so let hey, me pick, ask okay. another question. Well, yeah, let me ask you on that. So you just <laughs> you just said something very inflammatory about President Biden. It will, as you know, offend a lot of people. Yeah. And it will particularly offend people who work in mental health. You say you should not use a word like retarded. Uh, but you say that because you yourself have had mental health issues, that entitles you to use that kind of word as an insult. Now, I would say that's an arguable point. I've had my, my issue. My issue is I've had mental health allegations. So do you believe that you have any form of mental illness? I believe that I suffered from exhaustion. I believe that I suffered from exhaustion. I suffered from being lied to constantly by the people around me. And I believe those things can drive anyone to a point of maximum exhaustion. But I also believe that I'm extremely brilliant and I'm here to make the world a better place. And I'm tired of the left media trying to pick on me. And y'all picked on me enough and y'all y'all finally touched the person that's not going to stand, that's not going to take it anymore. And that's part of the reason why I'm on Uncensored, because what they'd like is for me to be quiet. Interesting thing about racism and cancel culture, it's kind of similar, right? It racism works on itself. I can go into the Gucci store at age 18 and I just assume that people think that I'm about to steal. So I buy more things with cancel culture. When I brought Marilyn Manson on stage with me when he was dealing with allegations, my stepbrother Marilyn was canceling himself. What they had so many people comment on my White Lives Matter t-shirt. There's people who are saying right there in Fashion Week, when are you going home? I'm so afraid. People thought I was going to cancel myself. I'm not going to cancel myself. I'm going to keep on delivering what I feel because guess what? It's very split opinions, by the way. If I talk to a black person that makes under a million dollars a year, they really are, they really relate to the George Floyd comments and feel hurt that I would even uh, p bring it up and question the approach. They have multiple documentaries on the death of JFK, but we're just supposed to believe this one media outlet version that preyed on our trauma and our pain. And then if I talk to rich black people uh, or white people, Jew or Catholic or atheist, 
they're really into the Jewish media com uh, comment because it affects their business interests. Okay, well, look, and it was me, really right, interesting. Right, let, me, right, we, let, yeah. let me just pick you up yeah. on, on the two things you've mentioned. The first right. one is what you said about George Floyd. And the, the reality of that, it's not a media interpretation of how he died, because the Hennepin County Chief Medical Examiner concluded that Floyd died from cardiopulmonary arrest. His heart stopped complicated by the way the police restrained him and compressed his neck. Now, he also said there were other contributing conditions. Wait, wait, wait. Well, hang on, let me finish. There were other contributing okay. conditions, yeah. narrowed arteries, high blood pressure, and fentanyl intoxication. But although these were significant conditions, he said, uh, and things that played a role in the death, they didn't directly cause the death. The cause of death was what that policeman what, what, did with his knee to George Floyd. What makes you believe that Floyd. person? Well, why would a coroner lie? What makes you believe that... Why would a coroner lie? Because he could get paid to lie. Yeah, but, because he could get paid to lie. Because but yeah, he's I watched it. I watched it for the eight majority minutes. of the press. Right, but I watched it for eight minutes. Now tell me this: Have you seen the the Candace Owens BLM documentary? I have watched uh, some of that documentary. But here's what I would say to you: When you watch that video of George I, Floyd, be, no, it's not a but. It's not. It's not. Well, it's I haven't not, watched the not whole thing. I, I need you thing. to watch. I, I know. I, okay, I, I, I know so what you said I want about. You to, I, I know Candace. Gonna, wait, I'm going to finish. La la. Sorry. La, you don't okay, have you to know do what that. That means. that means. I know what it means. That, that, you, la 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 means be quiet and let me finish. Bobby, you sir. did interrupt my All question. Right, so, <laughs> with the BLM, no, I wasn't. I wasn't finished. You're pressing agenda. You haven't seen the whole thing. I don't so have an agenda. I just read you what the coroner said. So we can have twenty different perspectives on how JFK died, mm -hmm. but. Us as black people, not only are, can we only vote one way, we're not allowed to have any other perspectives. And that the area for George Floyd, where he passed, the murder rate is up 50 percent and nothing. This is so-called movement, but it didn't move blacks anywhere. Right. Now, listen, so I, me I, as a I, I, black okay, yeah. person. I will say mm. there are legitimate questions yeah. about mm. the Black Lives Matter movement. No question. Um, but on the specific point about how George Floyd died, I don't think it's in question about what actually killed him. It was that police officer what with his knee it, on his well, neck. It, well, it is in question. It is in, it is in question. I'm questioning. Well, you can as question a black it, but, person but what you're questioning is friends, a coroner report. As a, hey, are, do, you, do you have friends that were killed by police officers? Do you have friends that were locked up? Do you have friends, do you have uh, people aborting half your race? No. So I am the black person with the black experience that's worth $11 billion and is the most influential person on the planet. And I am questioning it. OK, you and I have a right to question you, it. Absolutely. You can't tell me you can't tell me you can't tell me with your accent that me as an American Jew black person that I cannot question that death and question the means behind I'm that not, I'm was not, put on camera. I'm, I'm not saying you to can't traumatize. I'm not fin. La 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 means let me finish. Okay. I'm not finished talking. So we can't. I cannot. I uh, see because you distract my thoughts and then you try to make me look like a crazy person and you feel you have the right to cut me off. And I've proven you. You guys don't want it with me. This is like Terminator 20. You've never seen this before. You've never seen this before, so I want no one to play with me. Mm -hmm. I have the right to question because that videotape was used to traumatize my people and force us into the Democratic vote. Hey, George Soros, you're a real competitor. I respect you. I'm worth more money than you, and I have more influence than you, and have, you know, Pierce Morgan from a different country saying, well, the uh, I'm not going to do an English accent because that would be racist. Uh, I'm funny, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Fine. The, I know you, can, you can do that. As I said to you, the show is uncensored yet. You can say what the hell you like, right? But that doesn't mean I can't pick you up on a few things, right? You accept that. I accept that, but you tried to say it is unquestionable because this one Dr. Fauci said this. I know it wasn't Dr. Fauci, but I'm mm. just giving an example where we hear from what, even Google. Like people feel like, you know, if you Google it, it's factual. There's so much non-factual information about me on Google, but then I still believe Google. And people pay to get certain information to the top of Google. 
But this is good. This is keep going. Where, okay. where else you want to go with it? Here's you what guys I want to go. The, the civil rights lawyer Lee Merritt <laughs> responded to what you said about George Floyd's death and said, while one cannot defame the dead, the family of George Floyd is considering suit, which they're now doing, as you know, they're suing you for $250 million for Ye's false statements about the manner of his death, claiming Floyd died from fentanyl, not the brutality established criminally and civilly, undermines and diminishes the Floyd family's fight. So what is your response to that? Well, anybody who loses a loved one, my heart goes out to them. Any race, my heart goes out to the pain of that. I have a theory about it. Now, this is not a fact. This is a feeling that I have. In the documentary, George Floyd's two roommates said that George kept saying, they want a tall guy like me. They want a tall guy like me. So for me, I'm a creative, right? I can like make a dinosaur out of a femur, right? So if I'm making a dinosaur out of a femur and I'm looking at a documentary that says George Floyd was telling his two roommates they want a tall guy like me. And on the day of his death, he prayed for eight minutes. They said he prayed longer than he ever prayed. What do you think, me as a creative mind, the beautiful mind, right, the sensitive mind, what do you think I feel could have happened in that situation? All right. Well, honestly, if I'm being honest with you, I would say that because of your brilliant, beautiful, creative mind, as you put it, and I don't dispute that at all, you've got an extraordinary mind. Uh, and I can see that in the way that you conduct interviews. You, you go off on very long tangents, but they're sort of fascinating. I, I find it fascinating to listen to you. I'm not saying you don't have a right sort to question. Sort of, quite. Yeah. These are like Capote-level no, fascinating no, they're not. tangents. No, they're not. They're not. Are, I, I'm just saying it's it's the way you, you conduct yourself, and I think that's very interesting. What, what do you mean? It's, oh, we're not? Why? Why is it, oh, it's not Capote-level? Uh, oh, actually, I, I can't think you Capote level. If you would, sort of, if you would like me to compare you to Truman Capote, huh? I am fat. I am happy to do that. Yay! If you want to be known as the new Capote, okay. I'm with you. Okay, uh, I'm not going to question your talent. Your talent to me is completely unquestionable. Right? When you question a that, so the here's question my point about the femur to the dinosaur. No, no, I'm going to ask you a different question. Situation. I'm just going to ask if, you this. What, what, no, what, you're not. You're gonna. You're gonna. No, you, I, 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 didn't, I didn't finish my question. Well, hang on. You can't you tell me. You gotta answer my question. You can't first. tell me what questions to ask you. You accept to, that you I'm the interviewer. You can't answer my question. No, I said answer my question. No, I'm interviewing you too. Well, you you can't interview me. It's my interview. You're Bono. I'm interviewing you too. See, that's the way we rap. <laughs> let you me just. It? You know what I'm saying? Let, no, no. Let me so, just. Put, <laughs> let me just put this to you. So no, 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 no. You're trying to avoid. Hang on. You're trying to avoid. You no, 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 no. La, 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 la. To put quite a phrase. I'm gonna. You're I'm interrupting gonna me now. I'm going to get back to it. I'm I mean, going to get back to it. All right, you can, but let because me ask you Because you haven't this. answered my question. Here's my question for you, which you haven't answered. No, I'm not. Answer, don't, and don't, answer my, don't ask, answer my question with yeah, a question. But, yeah. I'm not answering anything to you. I'm going back my. to my original question in a way, which is simply this. I'm not saying you don't have a right to question how George Floyd died, but given the world watched that horrifying video of that policeman's knee on his neck, and given that is what the coroner said caused his death, albeit he had other underlying conditions, including fentanyl intoxication. When the family see someone like you, who's hugely influential, you, you're known around the world, questioning how their loved one died, they find that very hurtful, which is why they're now suing you for it. And my question for you is, do you understand the pain that sometimes your comments can cause, like this, this circumstance with George Floyd's family? Now, I'm going to ask you a question again. With my imagination, if you see when you see in the documentary that George Floyd's two roommates said he said they want a tall guy like me, they want a tall guy like me and that he prayed extra long on the day of his passing. Where do you think that takes my beautiful mind? I think it can take you to a place where you want to believe something which may not be true. I'm, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying all the evidence you points. You, you, well, I'm, you, well, I'm you giving you an honest it. answer. My you honest answer, answer is I think that they... One of that the wasn't honest. That was a, that was a political... Collect, uh, that was no, a, my honest belief, my honest belief uh, is hey, that... What do you guys do? What do you, I mean, people in the newsroom, what are they doing? They're like cringing right now. They're like, whoa. No. We never experienced not, this I'm, before. No, we I, never experienced I'm not cringing. a black entertainer <laughs> 
that won't be threatened by the media to back down from his opinion. Yeah, I think you mistake you know, me. Like you Martin mistake me for somebody who's going to be like the yeah. others. I have a show called Uncensored for a reason. I'm giving you a platform for a reason. You but are you're perfectly, pressing an agenda. No, no, I'm not. You're perfectly entitled you're to your opinions. You're pressing your agenda. But do you, do you accept you're you lying may, now. Do you accept you may not always be right? I just... I, I just called you I just called you a liar. How does that make you That's feel? That's fine if you think I'm a liar. It's fine. <laughs> no, you're a liar. You're pressing the agenda of the pain and trauma and trauma economy that is pressed on my people by the left. Actually, the trauma I think that was implemented to George Floyd was from a, a, a vile white racist police officer who need him to his death. And I agree with the coroner's findings because I don't see any reason why the coroner would invent that. So that's my belief. If you want to challenge that and you don't believe it, who, that's entirely who, your right. I, I have a question. Who do you think are the biggest vow white racist? The media. You think the media is racist? What? Please, next question. Please don't ask me any retarded questions. Okay, let, let me go to the, the next furore, which has been around you in the last couple of weeks, which is yeah. your attacks. Is that, is, that, is, that, is, that, is, that, is that is that British for theory? Is that British for theory? <laughs> What's theory, bro? Is that British for theory? You actually have quite a good British accent. That's quite good. Um, let me ask you, yeah, if I can, about the... <laughs> allegations that you have made anti-Semitic comments. And in particular, mm -hmm. when you said on Instagram, mm -hmm. I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. Now, many people who are Jewish found that deeply offensive. They wanted to know, what, what did you mean by going DEFCON 3 on Jewish people? Because DEFCON 3, as you know, is a heightened state of awareness for military action. So what did you mean by that? What, what was, here's your chance to clarify what you meant by Death Gone 3 on Jewish people. Well, thank you for allowing me to say what I meant due to the fact that I was blocked by Jewish people <laughs> after I said that. So I wasn't actually allowed to say what I was about to say. Uh, but what I was going to say is, I was going to talk about all of the contracts, all of the misdealings that I dealt with as an entertainer. Being that I'm an entertainer, I've been wronged so many times by Jewish businessmen. And the reason why I say people, if a black man is caught in the car with drugs or a gun and there's three other black guys in the car with them, guess what? They're all going to jail. So the reason why I say people is I want those businessmen's wives and fathers, mothers, grandmothers and kids to ask them, why is Ye so mad at us? Because they're taking money out of my children's mouths and putting it into their children's mouths. I'll give you this parallel and this analogy. If you take, you know, I just talked to. Irina Shake, right? And if you look at a picture of her at age 14, this person is beautiful, like one of the most beautiful, beautiful people that God has ever created, right? And if any man did her wrong at a young age, she would get to the point where maybe she would actually hate men. You've heard that terminology, right? So I'm in a point where I'm frustrated. I have the right to my anger. And I'm saying that people need to fix it. I'm not going to fix what I feel until what I'm feeling is fixed. OK, can I respond? You're not to just going to shut me up and say. No, I'm no. not going to shut you up. Can, yeah, I can I respond to what you just said? My, yes. my problem with what you've said, I'll be straight with you, is if I as a white man uh, posted tomorrow on my Instagram, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going death con three on black people. What would you think? Jew. No, no. If I said black people, what would you think? If that was what I posted? Well, did you accept that black people, you accepted that black people are Jew? Or no, but it, no, no, but it, no, no. I'll, I'll come to that in a moment. On the specific though, if I simply said, okay. in other words, all black people was the implication of, of what I said, 
I would get rightly cancelled. I would get rightly vilified and abused. You, I suspect, would be outraged by a white person saying such a thing because you wouldn't make any distinction about whether I was talking about certain black business people I'd fallen out with or whatever. But, you would think I was judging an entire populace by the colour of their skin. You are, by saying Jewish people on Jewish people, you're not saying Jewish businessmen, accountants, whatever, that you've had a problem with. You're basically saying in that statement, all Jewish people, which is why it caused such offence. And I'm curious whether you even, as you wrote those words, understood what Jewish people actually would feel when you said that and didn't make any uh, specific references maybe, to any individuals. Maybe, maybe they would feel how all my people have felt Maybe they would feel the pain of when a black artist looks up and they've been completely they've completely been raped by five Jewish businessmen. And there's multiple accounts. Why does the fact that happening. they're Jewish have anything Maybe to do with it? Maybe they would feel like that. But why, why would you say it again? It just so happens they are. Well, OK, but it, I wouldn't. I, why categorize them according to their religious faith, their ethnicity? Why would do that? Why can't you just describe them as business people that you've dealt with? That's fine. But what you're doing by saying Jewish Be people, these constant tirades, yay, against Jewish people. Wait, many people wait, find why that. Why are you calling it a tirade? Find, that sounds like you have it. I think it's a tirade. Where's the tirade? That was just, that was a tweet. It's it was a, a tweet. I'm, I, it's it not a just tweet, a tweet. And you asked is me it? to explain it. And that, have, have you felt my pain yet? You haven't felt my pain. I've you don't want to feel my pain. Oh, no, you on. don't hold account. La 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 okay. la la. You don't hold accountability to my pain. You're being a Karen. I'm talking you about. The, I'm talking. I'm not a Karen. To the I'm, pain. I'm not a Karen, and I'm not going to cancel you, and I'm not going to uncense you. I'm simply going to challenge you on what you're saying. You can't. You can't I think you, you can't don't understand me. the pain that you've been causing with some of these comments, and I think that one in particular, I can understand. Oh my God. God forbid, God forbid one comment could cause people to feel any of the pain that my people have went through for years. Even like the blacks being ushered to the left during the civil rights movement. What, no why, one has cared why does about he, black why does people. He, okay, why no, does no, he, all right. no one has Can I, I mean, say I agree that the racism against black people has been utterly deplorable, shameful, unacceptable. And thank God the world is beginning to move to a better place about the way what, what about, it has treated okay, black what people about, like you. What, however, however, it's, one form of racism yeah, no, doesn't no, it's justify... No, almost in a better place. Well, but one you see, form of racism see doesn't justify another. It's not a better I'm place. I'm not cutting you off. I'm finishing my sentence. You can respond. One it's form not, of racism... It's not, it's one not form of racism, racism... It is racism when you say I'm going death so for Jewish truth. people. That's racism. It no, is. it's not. It I is. Thought, I, th I thought. I thought you. I thought you had. I thought you had a, a platform where I could explain how I felt. You don't care about how I feel. You just want to shut me up. You don't want me to say out loud what my people have been going through. I do. Or do I you? I do. I'm okay. very happy. So, to what do have that. my people have been going through? What What led me to that point? My point what is. What led me, I, a person, yeah. a successful, a successful, influential extremely 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 attractive person mm. to get to that point i am not doubting for a moment that you will feel genuine pain about the racism against you and other black people in america not for one second would racism i deny by would i deny that racism by who well, by anybody i think any racism form of racism is wrong any form of racism is wrong i don't i, I didn't say i didn't say defcon on anybody though you said DEFCON 3 on Jewish people, specifically Jewish people. You didn't say any particular Jewish person. You said basically all of them. That is racism, yay. And I think if you were honest with yourself, given the fallout from this, you would think again about how you phrase that sentence. Because actually, you didn't mean all Jewish oh, given, people. Given the fallout, given the fallout, well, given do, the fallout. Do you care about the what hurt fallout? you cause Jewish people? What fallout? Well, you were removed from what very so you were removed from you. social media. I, I, oh, wait a second. You're not allowing me to talk, Chris. I'm You're not pissed. allowing me to I'm talk, pissed. Chris. Oh, I thought it was the same person. <laughs> He's American. I'm British. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, um, so the thing is, I want to bring joy 
to the world. I'm a composer, right? And this is a symphony. Our life is a symphony. We have so many beautiful ideas, but I feel the anti-Semite has been a wall, a cloak that allows Jewish businessmen, boom, I'll only be the police officer that says, hey, this guy with the gun is the only person going to jail. I'll be the first person that does that in history, right? So look, no one else in this car riding with the guy with the gun and the drugs is going to jail. Are you happy? I'll play by rules that are not played by from my people, I, just for the sake of this I conversation. I don't want you playing right? by any. So I don't want you playing by any. That makes you happy, right? I don't want. I don't want you to say that's things what, just that's to make what you me got, happy. That's what colonizers do: is no, give no, us rules. I'm not trying to that's colonize what colonizers you. Do, is I'm give not us trying rules. to colonize you. I'm not trying to censor you. All I'm saying to you is, <laughs> when you use a phrase, yay. Like, I'm going DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. Did you hear what I just said, though? Yes, I did. Wait, we're, we're past that. We're past that in a conversation. Well, hang on. We're not past but did it. Did you hear what I just said? We're not, I, pa we're not past are it. Are you unless happy that I said to... I'll focus let me explain on... What I, let me explain. Are you happy that I said... I know. I heard what Whoa, you did. Whoa, brother. Why yay, are yay, you talking over yay. me? Yay. Let me, why, get, let me why, respond. Yay. Chris. Yay. I'm Chris. Chris. Let's respond. Let me Chris. respond, right? I'm Chris. simply saying what you've just said is not what you said on your Instagram post, and you know it, right? If you have a problem with particular businessmen what do you who happen mean? to what, be what Jewish, you and you, that is and a you concern for you. And you know it. So you talk you about all Jewish but people. But brother, can we, brother, do you, what is the point? Brother, do you want me to grow from the statement? I just told you, okay, I was in a position where I've been hurt and this is the way I had the right to express myself. The point of this interview is for you to question me and then for me to answer and say, OK, even though the same rules are not applied to my people, if a person with a gun or drugs is pulled over and has four, three other people in the car, they're all going to jail. I'm not going to apply that to Jewish people for the sake of this conversation. Isn't that what you wanted? But you know what you did? You tried to civil rights me. You tried to pull me back to a week ago, but we're here today. There's been plenty of converse, conversations and commentary since that, but you want me to go back to 1960. No, no, no. Here's you what want I want, me to go no, back no. to seven days ago. All right, let me jump in. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to reflect. Okay, so have we grown? I, have, we, have, we, have we grown? Here's how we have grow. We yeah, here's how we grow. I want you to reflect. No, have we grown? I'm about have to. Have we grown? I'm about, You're not in charge of my growth. You're not in charge of I'm my about growth, to Chris. Uh, Okay, like, let me, here's how let me we phrase grow. it like this. I'm about to suggest to you <laughs> How you may grow if you choose to grow this way. And you, can, you can ignore no, me. You Pierce, can ignore Pierce, me. Pierce, 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 how much money are you worth? Not as much as you, sadly. Exactly. So take my advice. Maybe you'll get richer. I would love to take your business why advice. Why would I listen to you? I, well, why, do you <laughs> why do you hear what my advice is and then work out if I'm wrong? Can we do that deal? You haven't given me any credit or a moment of reflection for the comparison that I made, the brilliant, if I do say so myself, comparison that I made to the cops pulling over one black person and locking I everyone understand up. what you're and saying. And my tweet having issues. I, wait a second, I wasn't done with the sentence. La, la, la. Uh, uh, my tweet referring to all Jewish people, I said, for the sake of this conversation, I will refer to the business people who have destroyed me and my people and my fellow creatives. But you didn't even accept that I gave you that. You tried to push me back into 1960. No, I you didn't. tried to push me back into last week. No, I didn't. Okay, I do said, you accept that example that I gave you? I understand completely the example you gave me. I think all racism is wrong. So I, I just feel that we've grown. I would like you to reflect. If I you, feel we've grown. If you, you feel we've if, grown? If you've now changed what you wanted to say originally, my question for you is, do you now regret saying I death gone free day. on Jewish people. Are you sorry you said that? No. I don't think it matters. You should be. Absolutely not. You should be. Absolutely not. Yeah, but yeah, you should be. Absolutely not. Are, are, the, are the people, the Jewish businessmen that led me to that place, are they sorry for the way they've raped my I don't people? know who you're talking about in particular, but I don't know why you keep having to say and they're by Jewish. The way, you wouldn't, what you, is the fact they're Jewish got to do with anything? Why do you keep what doing that? What do you that? mean? They're the Jewish businessmen that did that. Because They're business they are. people. That's what they did. Why do you keep saying Jewish business people? Why do you keep using okay, their religion, let me, let me, let, their okay, ethnicity? Why do you keep me, doing up, that? Let me update it then. Okay. Okay. So I'll say this. Would it be, would, would I have grown into the box you want me to go on if I say 
to specify the business people that have raped my people that just so happen to be Jewish. I think what, by doing what you've just done, I find that I'm not even Jewish and I find that offensive. Why do you keep having to do that? I don't think I you know. get it at all. I don't I think, you, un That's I don't think you understand the offense you're causing when you keep using their religious I, I, background, their ethnicity as, so a, as you, a stick to beat them with. Why would you do so, that? So what are you more concerned about? Getting the richest black man of all time to cowtail because it's not going to happen. I don't want you to cowtail. You can do what the hell you like. You're, you're yay. You're you know, a billionaire. You can do what the hell you mm. want. I'm just, I'm just saying to you that I don't think not, you quite uh, understand. Not, when, you, uh, when you talk not, about... Uh, okay. Can I finish? It's not a uh, multi, multi. You're a multi-billionaire. Multi okay, well, congratulations. Not, uh, but that doesn't change yeah, the you. fact that when you insult the Jewish people and say you're going death con free on the Jewish people, that is as racist as anything you say you've been through and any pain that you've experienced. It's the same thing. Racism is racism. And you know that, I think, don't you? Yeah, obviously, that's why I said it. So you said it knowing it's racist? Yes, I fought fire with fire. Okay. I'm not here to get hosed down. At least that's honest. a different honest. type of freedom fighter. That's honest. All right. You were racist because you knew it was racist, but you decided to do that because people have been racist to you. Is that, no. is that your position? No. I'm not. I, first of all, I can't. What is the beginning? Read the whole tweet. I'm sure you have it in front of it. Somebody in your office has it. Get him a coffee and a, and a yay tweet. What do you want to know? The whole tweet? <laughs> I want you to read it out loud, sir. I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going death con three on Jewish people. The funny thing is I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew. Also, you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who opposes your agenda. That was the exact tweet. I like reading that whole thing. I can't be anti-Semite. I love Jewish people. I work with Jewish people. Yo, watch this, watch this. Some of my best friends are Jewish. Right. So you know how that how sounds. How many times have you heard that statement? Of course. <laughs> of course. Wait, wait. I've, have we ever heard that term before? Some of my... But the funny thing is, they are. I work with Dove Charney that got kicked out of his company, out of American Apparel. I work with this guy every day. He's like my twin. He's one of my favorite people in the planet. And we work through that. And we talk through it. And he says... Yay, why are you so mad? And I'm like, this is why I'm mad. This contract right here, what's going to happen before I'm done? We're going to open up all of the music industry contracts, all of the publishing deals, all of the athlete deals, all of the acting deals, all of the mortgages, all of the deals. But that's where fine. But yeah, that's all business fine. Business people who we went at. That's all fine. You can do all that. But of it has you to can start do somewhere. Of course the, you can do all that. And when you do it that, has to I, start hope you, somewhere. I hope you won't be judged as a black business person doing it all the time. That people don't phrase it all the time by the color of your skin, but by your business acumen. Isn't that what you would like? Isn't that what equality actually means? And of course I'll be judged by that because when people come into power, people get judged. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's nobody that gets judged more than a straight white male. The straight white male has the least amount of a platform to even speak. A straight white male can't say, my wife hurt me today. Because people will say, well, you're hurting women. A straight white male can't say, hey, a black employee didn't come in to work on time. Because then people will say, you're racist. A straight white male can't speak on a homosexual person because uh, they'll say you're ho you're homophobic. And so I empathize with the position of the straight white male. And part of the reason why I empathize with that position is because I know that I'm headed to that position. And what position that is? That is top power position. OK, <laughs> that's the top power position where you get all the rocks thrown. And okay. that's, that's the thing. I, I have friends, right, that will like. You know, actually, that's the reason why I'm going to be a good leader someday, because I'm really empathetic. But I call black people out on their stuff. I call white people out on their stuff because we're all people. We're actually only one species. And in order to whether it's my friends texting me like, bro, you got to get in the gym. You're looking chubby in the photo. You know, it's like we have to hold 
each other accountable to what's actually happening. And it's so much is based on you did that tweet wrong. So what I will say is I feel that my words demand more sensitivity for the frequency that I'm operating at and that I, and the amount of people that I'm communicating to. And I take that responsibility right now. But I will also say everything happens for a reason, because if it had been perfectly worded in English and because there's nothing whiter than English itself. Right. I'm already not speaking in my mother tongue. Right. So uh, if I had perfectly worded it in the most sensitive way, then we wouldn't be here right now. Now we're opening up the conversation like there. I'm not allowed to say whether or not I'm running for office in 2024. But I'll tell you what. If the left, let's say the left, the left would have never supported me anyway. And now I've got to call to attention. I am who you should support. The left did not allow Trump to be president. They treated him like he wasn't even the president. So even then he won, he was losing half of the American people every day and it divided the country. What I'm saying, whoever goes into office for uh, British media, for American media, we must support our leaders and not just run this hyper negative. You know what I will, uh, and black people hate when I apologize for this. When I see people like John Legend and Chrissy Teigen talk down on the president, I'm like, wow, that kind of sounds like me. That kind of sounds like the telethon. I opened up this level of disrespect towards our leaders and people were happy. Ah, and the left saw that and say, well, let's just have every celebrity do what Ye did at the telethon. So I take responsibility for that moment. And you know what? I just want to give every Jewish person a big hug. Also, I'm envious of the Jewish people. I'm envious of how they don't abort their children. I'm envious of how they don't shoot each other in the streets and then rap about it. I'm envious of how their, their families stay together. I'm envious that they turn their phones off on Friday night and the family comes together. I'm envious of how they do the business together. And I want that for the darker Jews. I want that for the black people. I want that. We need that. God said we should remove the word want, right? Okay. We're going to have that. Okay. And this is the beginning of it. But it know? seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me that you are acknowledging, as you've just acknowledged that it was wrong to say what you said about President Bush when he said he doesn't care about black people, and that may have encouraged all this disrespect towards presidents since. I think it's an interesting point you made. It does seem to me, Ye, talking to you, that even if it's hard for you to admit this, that you do regret the wording of that tweet which caused all the problems, and you wouldn't phrase it that way again. Am I right? I would tell I would tell my dad that my dad loved the White Lives Matter T-shirt because what audacity does a black man have to wear the exact same T-shirt that a white man could wear? You know, and my dad was a Black Panther. I mean, we have a water purification center. You know, <laughs> he's like the original Steve Jobs. Right. He's the educated version of me. Right. And he and he liked both of those things. But he said. You know, yay. He even calls me yay now. He's like, yay, you've, you, you, you've got to be more sophisticated with your wording. And that wording, like I said, I'm a bit sleepy and it lacked the sophistication needed to be the true conductor that I am, because it's the conductor's job to bring people together. And that was divisive, right. which is not who I want to be. Right. So, you we, know, so I'll tell you that I'm not looking. And also, let me let me. Well, put sounds out like right you agree. So it sounds like you agree with me. Do you agree with me then? I, w I want to I want to talk. OK, let me let me say that. I'm just thinking right now what's on my heart is the idea for people who do actually have severe mental health issues. You know, the word retarded for, you know, there's parents that have children who actually are mentally ill. And that word is really offensive right. to those people. So why use it? And and just because, yeah, just because I was I was feeling um, uh, uh, well, it's a couple reasons because people call me retarded. They treat me like I'm retarded. Uh, and so I embrace it. It's like you call somebody a so much. They say, I'm, 
You call somebody a bitch so much, they say, I'm a bitch. You call somebody a retarded so much, you say, I'm retarded. Like, I was exhausted, and I embraced the idea of having a serious mental health uh, uh, issue. But Noah, I mean, not Noah, Noah also, but Moses was basically on speed when he was doing what he did. Let me ask you, yeah. I mean, by I, the way, I, look, out, of interest, assume, out of interest, yeah. how much sleep do you yeah. get a night? I don't, it, I, I'm not here to talk about how much sleep I get. Well, I don't owe you been, that. You've literally just been talking you know, how, about... How much, sleep do, how much sleep do you get a night? I had about five and a half hours last night? night, actually. Not very much. Um, but, Are, but you're the one that's and raised and I, and this I, issue. And I, and I probably had the same. Right. My, my question is only because... I probably because, had the same, but, what, but... It's only because you've been talking about you don't believe you have a mental illness. You think it's lack of sleep. So I think it's an obvious question to ask, well, how much sleep do you get? Do you, are you constantly sleep deprived? Is that, is that one of the reasons perhaps sometimes, as you say, you feel sleepy and you shoot from the hip verbally and you say stuff that maybe when you're rested, you wouldn't say it the same way? Would that be fair? Tell, tell me what's... Okay, no, it's not fair because what's more important, the pain and the truth of what I'm talking about and what led me to that tweet or the tweet itself? I think both can be true. Because the, the, the problem you have is I think you've acknowledged you one tweet. I think you've acknowledged you that the wording of the tweet like 50 was offensive. Years. Yes, I understand, but the, you know the damage it caused, and I think I, I understand think, that that was offensive. And I think that you have accepted the you damage probably it shouldn't have phrased no it that way. Mere, no near, no, no. You as a white person are so stuck on the idea that what I said was offensive, which is a very Karen approach. You're not sticking on the fact. You you have not unpacked what happened with those contracts. I've said that, but you didn't ask me another question about it. That means there's an agenda Absolutely not. inside of your I platform. Have, I have repeatedly said to you that I'm sure I, I, I do not disbelieve that you've had contract business issues with various managers, accountants and so on. My argument is that when you Just do it, me when or, you, or other me, I'm sure other many, me's. I'm sure many other artists other in the music business. Yeah, of course. You're sh you know why you're sure? Because because you don't care to do the research because it doesn't affect you. No, it's because you said Have you something. done any research. No. Yeah. Let me explain to you. I'm not doubting what you you're saying. You don't care. I do care. You don't care about me. You don't care about my people. I care about me. I care about my people. So as for me to stand up and God forbid I step on someone's toes while I'm at it. It's not someone's toes. You stepped on the entire Jewish people's toes with a very deeply inflammatory tweet, which I think you've now accepted. You shouldn't have phrased that way. It's taken a bit of time to get there, but I think you have accepted that, right? Have you accepted that you've put no effort into understanding how I got there? I, I don't think, I don't think, honestly, 10 years from now, honestly, I don't think there is any. You're going to apologize to me about this no, I'm not. interview. I'm not. You're going to apologize to me about this interview within the next 10 years. No, I'm not. Because here's the thing. Mark I don't, my words. I don't doubt you've had. It's very one-sided. No, it's, it's not. It's very, it's no, very white-sided. Oh, come it's on. It's very one-sided. It's very like. It's, yeah. not, it's not white-sided. I'm not doubting you've had business issues. I'm saying the, the way to respond to that is you not to go public me. to millions no, of people. Me. You and say you're going DEF CON 3 on Jewish no, people. Millions but, of people. Right. Millions of people have had DEF CON 3 on their contracts. Right. You millions didn't, of you didn't say that. Home to their you didn't say that. Said, millions of people, well, I open it up. Now, I, I didn't, but now I'm saying it now. Sir. Okay, so now what now I think you should say, I think you Are should you... say to the Jewish people, I'm <laughs> sorry for the offensive language I used in that tweet. I wouldn't do that again. This is what I really meant. I think people would respect you if you said that. I don't know why you can't just say that. I'll, let me, you know, you, know, you know when I'll say it? When I sit down with the people who write out the contracts for the NBA and for the NFL, and for professional music, and for uh, acting contracts. We need to go to the top lawyers, the top execs, the owners of the stadiums, the owners of the football teams, and the owners of the record labels. And we're going to put them all in one room, and we're going to read every Let's go top 10 in each one of these categories, right? Let's read Michael B. Jordan's okay, but contract. Why would any of that? Okay, but Aaron why would Donald's any of that? Why bro, would any of hey, that? Hey, bro, hey, hey, bro, I ain't finished. I ain't finished my sentence. Nothing I you're, nothing you're saying has idea. anything to do hey boy, with regret. Hey, hey boy. Don't call hey me boy, boy. Don't finish. I told you. 
Oh, don't treat me like a boy then. I'm, I'm going to finish my sentence of my idea. Nothing you're saying has got anything to you're do not, with okay, the tweet. Cool. Uh, bro, it? I was in the middle of a sentence, boy. Okay, so are, are you going to allow me to finish my sentence? Yes. If you then answer my question. Okay, so, okay, so I'm going to tell people when I would apologize for the tweet. This is what has to happen first. I need all of the top executives in Hollywood. I need the top executives at the NBA and at the NFL. We'll, we'll do those two sports specifically. And I want the top executives in music, dealing with publishing, dealing with uh, like Spotify and Apple Music and uh, Universal Music and, and all the top exec. Uh, let's do like five top execs there. And I want to look at the top 10 earners in each one of those fields contracts openly. We want to compare and contrast the contracts. And then once we open that conversation and we need to do it on a platform live with lawyers asking questions and we'll and we'll have the top lawyers like a Johnny Cochran, Robert Kardashian level legal team, you know, looking at all of these contracts together. After that moment happens, then I will say, I'm sorry. Okay. If that's your position, Inter that's clear. Interview, interview adjourned. Love you. <laughs> okay. That's the end of the interview. I mean, I, I, get, I just get the feeling from you that you're, you're obviously a complex character. Brilliant in many ways, fascinating, like I say, compelling. Uh, you have a huge appeal to millions of people around the world. It just seems to me that occasionally your mouth gets you into trouble and that perhaps on reflection, sometimes you look back and wish you hadn't said things. Is that accurate? No, nah, not really. <laughs> because the things I say are on behalf of God. Like, it's not always godly because I'm a man, but God is definitely using me. Uh, you, uh, you, you're you're, you're uh, Catholic faith? I am, What's yes. your background? I am What's Catholic. Your Catholic, yeah. Well, we're, we're working for God here. And it's just like with black people now with entertainment, we're coming into wealth, but all the other, you know, black people with anywhere near... Uh, my amount of wealth would never cross the lines of, you know, taboos inside of the media that I would, that actually we used to in rap. All these words, we used to say these, so it's all these like words that are being removed from our vocabulary, words that evoke emotion. Don't you feel like the salt is being taken out of our, our food? You know, look at Dune. The people who control the salt controlled all the money. And people are trying to control, control the salt, and it's salt in our language. That's why I'm, I, I will not apologize for uh, having a bit of salt in my words. I will say, hey, this can be improved on, but it's like, hey, look, I'm going to update. You're looking at the God's iPhone 100. We are God's iPhone, right? If you think about it, we're his favorite creation. We were made in his image and we need updates and society, capitalism, media, and thought police have been stopping us from our updates. We have to have a thought and then we have to actualize it. I like the word actualize better than execute because execute is a negative word. We, we discussed this. We have to actualize. There's so many, think about, you know, for uh, a homosexual kid, age 12 at school, not wanting to say out loud how he felt or feeling like if he said how he felt, he would get bullied. Or what if he said how he felt and then somebody said, you said the way you felt and what your experience was in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Now you need to apologize. We're fine that you felt that way, but you need to apologize for the way you said it. But just having the, the courage to do it in the first place would be, 
you know, that's the thing that needs to be given credit. Like, yeah, you know what? We'll say in these past two weeks, I made a big splash because the first time you dive in the deep end, you're not going to look like an Olympic swimmer, but we're going to have to learn how to swim. And I've dived in the deep end. Okay. I think I understand what you're saying. Let me mm -hmm. ask you about your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lots of speculation, of course, constantly. If, if, if you understand, if you understand what I'm saying, could you translate what I'm saying? Yes. I, I want you to translate I, what I, I said. I, okay. I know what, and then let's move on to the next question. Okay. I will, uh, let me attempt to translate. What did I what, mean by that? I think what she meant was that you are not afraid to ruffle feathers. You're not afraid to cause trouble where you feel it's justified. You're not afraid to call people out who you think deserve to be called out. But then occasionally you've, you've expressed yourself in a way that perhaps hasn't quite hit the right mark and that you are work in progress, as indeed we all are, and that you could phrase things better, which would cause less offence to a wider number of people, when in fact the target of your anger may be much more specific. That would be my interpretation of what you've just said. Yeah. Do you think that we can move forward as a civil civilization without there being any offence? Because one person's truth can be the other person's lie. I think it entirely depends. You know, it's like, I, I think it entirely uh, depends. Honestly, I, look, part of me wants to say yes to that. But I do think there is a line and we should all be mindful of the line. And the line to me is I don't think any form of racism or perceived racism should ever be tolerated. I don't think that is free speech. It's just hate speech. And I think one of the problems with what you said about the Jewish people was the more generic way that you phrased that sentence. People didn't understand you were talking about specific business people you'd had a problem with. They thought you genuinely meant you were going DEFCON 3 on all Jewish people. And they took that to be a blatant form of anti-Semitism. I think you've explained in this interview that was not your intention at all, which is good. But I think if you're asking me to interpret what you've just said yourself, that would be my interpretation. That, you know, you're... you're Work in progress, I, I, and sometimes you say stuff I didn't just which explain. doesn't quite doesn't quite doesn't quite get over what you're really meaning. But what I really mean is, I don't want it to be settled. I don't want, I, I don't want, uh, I don't want to be forgiven by Jewish people until we get to the what the problem really is. I don't want you know like Elon. He got on Twitter. He said, "I talked to Ye. He took it to heart." And I liked my boy standing up for me, but I was like, but my, the fight isn't done, though. Everybody, white media, left media, they just want to squash the fight. They want to keep the pain of George Floyd going, right? But they don't want the pain of our representatives. What did Elon the, Musk the, say to you about, Jewish the, about the tweet, media. out of interest? It's vague to me right now. I don't want to misquote him. What was the general, it's vague to me. What was the general point the, of what he was saying? It's vague to me. It's truly vague to me. I would, you know, I'm an honest person. I'll tell you what it was. But I keep on saying it's just always about this tweet. It's so much more. If you, if you look back at this, energy, at this interview, mm. and it's like a direction arrow, it's more in the direction of fixing the statement than fixing the problem. I think both and things, that's my problem. I, I understand. But I would say to that that I think they're two different things. And you can fix both, actually. Uh, and I, I accept that part of what you were trying to do and the point you were trying to make, I completely understand it because you've explained it in more detail. On Elon Musk, there is a suggestion that when he gets control of Twitter, which seems likely now, that he will bring you back. He'll bring Donald Trump back. Do you think that would be right? It would be lit. Do you think it's wrong that you and Trump have been have been banned from these platforms? Absolutely. I was talking to Trump a couple of days ago and he was like, I'm not going to do his voice. Right. But he was saying, uh, you know, I had 277 million followers and the next day I had nothing. Mm -hmm. And that related to, you know, Mark Zuckerberg meta, you know, Mark Zuckerberg thinks he is the government. These tech companies feel they're more powerful than the U.S. government 
to the point of actually kicking the actual president of the United States off of an American social media platform. This is the world we live in. And, and I, I, would say, say I would say, I listen, that I, when I, I agree yeah. with you, and I'll tell you why. I, I think it's completely inconsistent that companies like Facebook and Twitter allow people like the Ayatollah of Iran, for example, to remain on the platform, or Taliban people to be on the platform, but they don't allow an American president. That seems to me completely ludicrous. Yes, and this is part of the 100-year plan that they have books on about uh, you know, China's takeover of America after losing the Industrial Revolution. Now, let's talk about business people. We won't refer to their race. And by the way, I'll tell you, as a Jew person, a person that has a lot of Jewish friends, it's not a race, it's a people. Right. And every Jewish, every Jewish homeboy I know is going to be like, yo, yeah, that's right. So, um, uh, but it's hard to attract, it, it, it's hard to influence patriotism on capitalists. And it's a responsibility for us as Americans to retake our power in media, to retake our power in our schools, to retake our power in our farms, to retake our power in our medicine, in our hospitals, to revitalize the country. Because America invented rock and roll at the end of the day. We have the inventions. America created Apple. You understand? Like we created the platforms that the world, uh, that the world runs on now. And we've allowed the business people in these companies to sell us, and whatever the term is, sell them in a handbag, whatever it is, for cheap. And Americans are God-fearing, for the most part, God-fearing Christian people, and we're not cheap, and we can't be sold for cheap, and we're here to stand up and say, you got to honor who we are, our families, you got to honor our God, Jesus Christ. So, uh, uh, next subject, next subject. Can I, can uh, I ask you something? So... Let me ask you something else. Yeah. <laughs> I want to ask you about your, your family, yeah. because you mentioned families there. A lot of stuff has been written about you and your family, uh, a lot of it fueled by you, by Kim, by others. Where are things now with your family? What is, what is your relationship like with Kim, with your kids? Uh, uh, Kim has Zionist media handlers surrounding her, all in and out her Hulu TV show, all in and out her, her family, all in, in or out, the house that I created for my family, but God is alive. The devil is a defeated foe and Kim is a Christian woman and she's not here just to have content up on adult channels. She's not here just to have that last interview magazine uh, cover. If you look at the two interview magazine covers, look at the one when I was there and look at the one when I'm not there. And that's the reason why this Tuskegee experiment of such that's happened to the black community where they took the fathers out of the home and the leaders out of the community and have torn apart the community. Now they've seen that's worked and they're doing that to America. They're attempting, they're trying. I mean, that it's interview, the interview, dime, the, the though, interview magazine you, yeah. cover you're talking about, I think is the one where she was basically semi-naked in front of the American flag. And I, I thought that was pretty distasteful, actually. It was about the American dream. And I thought, well, if that's the that's, American dream, we're all screwed. I mean, in America. And I and I agree with that. And I, I didn't feel the platform to voice my opinion because I want to. It's always like, hey, this is your kid's mother. This year. But it's time where the leaders like I'm still the priest of that home, Chris. I'm still the priest of that home. They, they want to make it this matriarch society, all that. And, you know, but I am the priest of this home and God is alive. I am the living Robert Kardashian. And I'm going to stand up for what God would want as a Christian. And then people say as a Christian, oh, you're not supposed to curse. You're not supposed to have righteous indignation. But I do. You know, Christians had swords also. Christians got guns. I tell you that. 
You know, so but do you, do you talk I'm to, do you talk to Kim? To what I, I mean, in. there have been reports, yeah, that you and Kim don't really talk at the moment. She's distancing herself from you because of the stuff you've been saying was getting controversy. Is that true? I mean, John Legend is distancing, him, distancing my, himself from me and buying more Christmas sweaters in the middle of spring also. So I'm not saying that, you know, they're making the right decisions. Uh, she's being influenced. You know, but I guarantee you what's not finna happen, we're not finna see her in one of them John Legend Christmas sweaters no time soon. But, but do you talk to her? Are you still in, in touch don't with you, Wait a second, don't you think it's like don't you think it's like funny to like make a joke out of stuff sometimes? Don't you think like God has a sense of humor? Of God course. Well watch this. God 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 when I got married, I bought this house. I like, you know what I'm saying? I did this tour and spent all the money I had on this house to like surprise Kim and give her this house that she wanted, that Lisa Marie, Marie Presta used to own. And, um, and then I got the house and then I put all this money into renovation. And then there goes the neighborhood. Drake moves down the street five blocks. And that's when I knew God was funny. But watch, <laughs> this is where God is even funnier. Here goes like Louis C.K. part two level, because Louis C.K., is the funniest man alive uncancel him now right so the and he was funnier before he's canceled because all he would do is type of jokes that you'd get canceled on right so uh uh so um i got an office and you know outside of crenshaw like in an opportunity zone and this office, 57,000 square foot office, is the one that Tucker Carlson came to visit me at. Mm. And I look out the window, and whose and who's office is being built? A brand new one. The Skims office. <laughs> it's like, who's writing this stuff? You know what I'm saying? Like, God is funny. So that's the thing. We always got to be like... We got to be funny. We got to have a sense of humor. Like, you know, but yeah, let me humor, ask you, let me ask you, uh, uh, there's a lot. Yeah. But, but are you are you yeah. sad that you're getting divorced? Are you sad the relationship came to an end? That happened two years. We got to divorce two years. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, we're, we're are you actually we've been, we've been got divorced. Are you talking? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, let me rephrase that. Are you sad that, that you're no longer together, that you're divorced? We'll always be together. She dresses exactly like me. What do you mean? Like my kids are me. You know, there's no person that she'll ever get with that will influence her more than God and then her priest on earth, which is me. You know, whether it's the, the Skims clothing line, the designers, the, the architects, all those people. You got the Clintons, the left utilizing what we built together to try to use her as an influence for the black culture and the word culture in general for the next elections. They need those 300 million followers from Kylie and Kim on their side going into their election as they push trauma culture to the black people again, as they claim anything, any of my questions of business dealings to be anti-Semitic comments and push, you know, Kim to, you know, as a billionaire mother of a lawyer and a mother of four Jew black children uh, to do covers like interview. And that's what happens when they take the dads out the home. And that's what they've been doing in the hood. They take the fathers and the leaders out of the, out of the homes. And if we keep on allowing this to happen and we don't have some level of a decency clause inside of our media on what everyone sees. Like when I was young and I would go to the video store, if I wanted to go into the adult section, it was a curtain. It was a person sitting there watching, making sure that kids didn't go in. If the kids went into that section, there was a video camera. And they would have you be escorted out of that section. Now that section is forced through TikTok. That section is subverted and kind of mixed with the drink inside of music directed at children, inside of content through Disney, on Hulu, which is Disney also, and in so many branded commercials to confuse children and to sexualize our children way too early yeah, can before I just, they can even make their own decisions can, about yeah, their life. You, look, you make some very interesting points yeah. again. Uh, just to clarify one thing, though, you are yeah. actually divorced, are you? Because 
my understanding was that you weren't actually divorced yet. You know, I ask God the same question some mornings. Am I divorced, God? <laughs> am, I, am I divorced? Because I might be divorced on paper, but I'm not divorced of the idea of being the protector of not only this person who is so influential. Imagine Kim making all of her decisions that she does publicly. You know, grown folks' business is grown folks' business. Never know what could happen with a little sippy sippy or whatever. But, you know, all the decisions that she makes publicly being based on an audience of one. And Pierce, what audience do you think I'm saying that is? Well, you. No, not me. For us as Christians, right? Um, what, who is our audience? We have an audience of one. Well, you mean God. God. So picture this world, envision this world. Here's another one. This is past my whole, this is past what I'm saying about having the, the, the heads of the football teams and the basketball teams and the music industry uh, opening up their contracts the way I do, right? Picture the most influential woman on the planet, which is Kim Kardashian, right? Um, and I got this one thing I want to definitely say in the interview. Um, Picture the most influential person on the planet, the most influential woman on the planet, performing in public only for that audience of one, for God. Imagine the overwhelmingly positive effect that that will have on the planet. And mark these words, it will happen someday. Okay. And I had this thing. I had this, like, you know, of course I'm, uh, I'm a divorce and this is like a, a funny thing I thought. Being that her name is no longer West and my name is no longer Ye, if there was ever, I mean, sorry, being that her name is no longer West and my name is now only Ye, if we were ever to be together again, what would our name be? Kim Ye. <laughs> would you like that? Everything is up to God, and God has proven to me many times that it's not about what I want or what I would like. It's just up to him on what he sees fit. But you do, know, David but do, had to but let me ask to, you, do, I mean, to the yeah, sheep. But do, do you still love Kim? To the Kim? sheep, sorry, not do, with an S. Do you still love Kim? I absolutely Love, I'll, I'll love her for life. And, I'll pre and I will protect, oddly enough, I'll actually protect her. Because when I call out things that I feel are wrong, mm. you know what I'm saying? When I make products, like, say the difference between me and Bernard no. Like, say, watch, Elon Musk, every product, the reason why Elon Musk is like a Steve Jobs is, if he makes a flamethrower, he would use that flamethrower. If he makes a Cybertruck, he would use that cyber truck. Me, if I make some 3D printed boots, you know, I'm gonna have the, the 3D printed boots on. Wow. And I love wear those. Them every day. Can I get a pair of those? <laughs> Absolutely, they, sir. They, they would Tucker really suit me. Them also. These boots are a hit. Love those. Yes. They look fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to Thank one you day very much, sir? Do you think, given that you've got all these kids together? Would you like one day to get back with Kim, do you think? Do you feel like you've gone through a very tumultuous period, but that actually the love underneath it all between two people remains? And would you like to get back together? Those thirst traps still be fire. Is that, is that Do you yes? understand what I said? Do you understand that language I right there? I think so. There? I think that so. <laughs> you better explain it, explain it to me. <laughs> what do you think those thirst traps still be fire means? Can you explain that to me? <laughs> well, with my uh, rather, rather creative British what mind. those thirst traps still be fire? I, I would imagine it <laughs> means that you... a brilliant Brit British man. <laughs> I would imagine it means you still fancy your, your ex-wife. Is that right? You know... I, I would prefer to not be put on this. Uh, I would never, I, I would prefer to not be put on the spot 
uh, on these kind of questions. What I can say is, uh, God is a God is alive, and He places people. He placed David in uh, uh, to tend to, to to. God had David tend to the sheep, knowing that one day He would prepare him to fight Goliath. Mm-hmm. So I believe that that day of me fighting Goliath has been this past two weeks. The media is Goliath. And there would be no chance of having a civil civilization or a civil uh, democracy in America without me challenging the media two years out from the election. Because this thing that I'm challenging may be setting myself up to one day be able to be president or it's uh, maybe for the other president. But regardless, we have to have some decency in America as the thought leaders in the content that we put out. But you okay, but on God that point, on that point, yeah, now. on that point, yeah. you, you keep talking about the media as if somehow it's the media that's created all this furore in the last two weeks. But you have said other things which, in my opinion, the media couldn't ignore. You know, you suggested in your interview with Tucker Carlson that Gap, for example, the clothing wear company, had prior knowledge of the Evalde shooting, which is obviously completely insane. Why would you say that? And then why would you be surprised yeah, if, the media, be... if the media then react to it? They're bound to. What I'm saying is that was worded. That might have been worded in a way that the media could take in the wrong way. But I thought it was really interesting. The amount of people at Gap. We had a, we had a, a release that was happening and the amount of people at Gap that were rallying around this as a media moment, if they didn't know about that, where there's theories, you can't say that the theories about 9-11 are completely insane. Actually, That's just the person I am. I'm that kind of person. Well, look, you're perfectly entitled to have theories. I think most of them are completely insane. But on on this this specific one, yeah, on Uvalde, you even suggested that Matthew McConaughey, you even suggested that Matthew McConaughey may have, it was all a bit weird that he was speaking so early about it when in fact he came from Uvalde and spoke very passionately after this atrocity. So I think people read these comments. They're like, what are you talking about? No, okay, so I'm not, what I'm saying is I definitely feel there was a major media push around that to create trauma and fear culture because the amount of people, and this is not to be in any way, I care about people who have passed away and have lost loved ones. 20 kids were shot deeply. dead in a, cla- just, in a classroom. Right. 20 yeah. children were shot dead right. at school. So let me explain. No one, no okay. one in the media is putting and how many, any sort of trauma into that. That is the trauma. Okay, Pierce, Pierce, how many, how often does that happen in my hometown? Well, the Every 20 week. kids are killed and in why? school in one mass shooting. As far as I'm aware, it's never happened in your hometown, has it? Every, yeah, it does. At not, least not in one mass kids shooting. Are killed in Chicago. I didn't finish. I didn't finish. Okay. Let's not do this again. Okay. We're, we 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 reviewed. We I reviewed how understand. That goes. You could talk. At least, at least fourteen kids are killed in Chicago every week, mm-hmm. and there's no media push around it, and that's my issue. When I was at Gap, there was no media push around the killings. In Chicago, but I would agree. So let me. Yeah, let me I, went to, I agree with you. I completely agree. My youngest son has recently been at University of Chicago every year, and there were two students shot in that time. I completely agree that there is never enough attention given to all the slaughter from gun violence in Chicago. Completely agree with you. What I can't agree with is any suggestion by you that anyone at Gap or Matthew McConaughey or anybody else had any prior knowledge of what happened at Evalde. Of course, they didn't. What I'm saying is, I'm not saying they did, but with the amount of attention that went... Understand, I was jealous, once again. You feel me? I'm jealous that so much attention went in this direction, but doesn't go 
into the direction of Chicago when then the say same that. thing say that, the same yeah. amount of people. That's what you should then, say. I'm not Again, finished. It, yeah, but it comes I'm, down to the way I'm you phrase it, these bro. things. Bro, hey, hey, I just said it. Yes. I, like I just said, you're not always going to say the things the right way, but at least I have the bravery to open the conversation. Mm. Your first... Your first sentence isn't your last sentence. My first rap that I told wasn't my last rap that I told. And now that's the whole point. It's said. Once it's said, accept that it was said. I am the iPhone 20, right? I'm growing. I'm a hybrid. I'm updating. Okay. I'm constantly updating. And that's what we're supposed to do. You can't, you can't drag me back because that's, you enjoy that, right? When you bring it up, I'm saying, hey, this is what I'm saying. I felt... You know, this, think about this. Have you ever heard the term premeditated murder? Yes. I, I feel, I feel like the George Floyd was a premeditated murder. That's my feeling based off of, and we never got to that in the beginning, but that's my feeling based off of the information I saw in the documentary. Mm. I think it was a premeditated murder a premeditated in the sense that this, I, I agree, but not for the reason you think. I think it was premeditated in the sense that that policeman didn't give a damn about George Floyd's life, stuck his knee on his neck for eight minutes and killed him. So but, but I know we don't agree about that. I don't want to go back police, over that. I want to ask I you, the, I want to ask you, yeah, about I think something the policeman, different. I think the policeman, I think, I think the policeman was involved with it too, but not in the way that you think about it. Right. I and think I, he was involved in a different way. I think we'll have to... I, uh, I think he was also part... I think he was also part of the setup. Okay, look, we're not going he's to agree about that. But he's I... been moved. He's been moved. He's he's been he's been moved. And you're go I, I need you to watch the documentary, okay. and we could talk offline and then talk online again. Okay. Because what's not fair is for a white martyr like JFK to be analyzed a hundred different ways, but then for a black martyr like George Floyd for us to only accept the one way. That's like us only accepting the, uh, the one like, way for the black vote. Like I we said have to you, the opportunity yeah, like to I said look to at you, it different ways. Like I said to you, you are completely entitled to challenge anything, frankly. Uh, and I'm equally entitled to come back at you and say what I think. That is a, that's what a democracy is about. Let me ask you before it's... Before but, it's but, I want to ask you one but, thing about but, your... But look, no, no, I got... Okay. I, I, no, I, I don't want to keep going the, back to that same the issue. the disparagement right there. Yeah. Uh, but look at the disparagement because I still had, a, I had an idea. I don't like the word point. I had an idea mm -hmm. that you didn't embrace right there. The martyr JFK, we analyze his death a hundred different ways, right? Mm -hmm. But with George Floyd, he died that way. And then it's white people telling super brilliant, successful black people, you, okay, you have the right, you're, it's literally like on some Black Lives Matter, like your life matters, like, oh, your idea matters but then shut up and we're not gonna go back to it. Mm. No, we're gonna unfold it. I need you to watch that documentary and I want us to talk line by line. I wanna do, because look, I think that we're a good conversation and, and now within yeah. the next two years, we need to talk a lot of times. So I right? would we love to, to do have that. this kind of thing. Honestly, but, I would honestly, I honestly- We should unpack. I, listen, yeah. I, let me say to you, I've, I've wanted to interview you for years. Yeah. I genuinely mean it when I say I think you're one of the most brilliant, talented people that I've seen in the public sphere. And you have a lot of fascinating ideas and you're incredibly creative and you're completely entitled to your views. Uh, but I'm entitled to mine. And I think we've had some really, uh, really interesting exchanges actually. I wanna just talk to you quickly before we, we finish about your kids and about you as a father. What kind of kids do you want them to be? What kind of values do you want to instill in your children? I want my kids to finish their education. I know that my album was called The College Dropout, but when I look at the way, you know, just like, like you said, your kids are in the University of Chicago, we need the education. That's another thing to be jealous about. You know, the, the Muslims have the Quran, right? And Jewish people also have their, uh, their holy books, but they have the education. And once we have the education, the education and we have the, the strong black uh, minds, we need to pull them together. There hasn't been end-to-end -end black owned communities since Black Wall Street or since the gentrification of Harlem. Like I was talking, I have this tech company called STEM, 
right, that had the most successful launch in tech, tech history with uh, 80,000 STEM players uh, as far as a first launch, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we sold 80,000 STEM players back in February and we went off the Apple platform and now we're coming with the next generation that has a projector in it and it's coming with 4,000 96 movies. I did that because my Amiga computer had 4,096 colors when I was in seventh grade. And also you can download films without having to use an Apple product. So I called this guy and we're working on finishing up elements of the deal. And he's using emotional bullying and like his shoulders are down. You could tell on the call. And he says, well, because of your comments, we're not going to be able to hire people. Uh, it's the people that we need. And I said, well, well, how many people do we have working for us? He said, 60, and we have 40 part-time. I said, well, how many Jewish people do we have? He said, well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, you have some. And I said, well, do we have black people working for us? He said, yeah. I said, how many? He said, two. And I said, you're telling me we can't find 60 black engineers? Well, yeah. And see, that's where that comment that got me into so much trouble forced me to look at myself as a black, as the richest black man since Mansa Munsa, right, with multiple tech companies. And where am I kicking the tires inside of my own company to ensure that I'm hiring my people? Because Chinese people hire Chinese people and Jewish people hire Jewish people and Catholics hire Catholics, right? But with blacks, we'll give our company to uh, Bernard Arnault. We'll give our company to Mark Zuckerberg. We'll give our company away. And it would almost come off as anti-Semitic if I hadn't crossed that gun line so far to say, hey, I'm, I have to go and ensure that I'm hiring the, the brightest black minds to my black owned tech company. You know, Kamala is our never again. We're never going to just hand something over just because we like the way this person looks and we have the emotional connection because she was a Delta and my mom was a Delta. She got 96% of the black female vote. You would have thought Drake was running and we haven't seen her really honestly since. And you know, I wanna say something about the left. The left, you guys gotta sit with me. Your, your current administration that these guys put up, they, they, they shit the pot on this one. They should have got Bernie, but Bernie had too much of a conscience and so you got a guy with no conscience. Instead of getting Bernie Sanders, you guys got weekend at Bernie's. And, I, I, and you know that you don't like where, where we're at right now. So we got to have a conversation when you see, going in. When you listen, on how to just, I won't disagree with you about, <laughs> uh, I don't disagree with you about President Biden um, uh, or Kamala Harris for that matter. Yeah. Let me ask you about someone we haven't mentioned, Vladimir Putin and what he's been doing in Ukraine. What is your view of that? I do not believe in war. And I believe that there is ways that America could have avoided this war. But Biden has money. Biden has reasons for us to be at war right now for selfish reasons. And what I would like to do without giving you too much information, I would like to speak with my political advisors to give you the exact, uh, exact information. I'm not gonna, hey, watch this one, Pierce. I'm not gonna shoot from the hip on this one, especially talking about war and things as sensitive as Ukraine and the Russian war. No, no, you, you, we already got that um, the R-E-T-A-R-D comment earlier that maybe we could work on that I feel like is gonna be massively offensive and I really do, I, now that one, I do apologize to people that I offended earlier in the interview on that comment. Maybe we could look at scrubbing that if we, if we, if we deem well, actually, we like to. Well, actually, I would, man, say, I would say yeah, this. Yeah. It's an uncensored interview. You said something which you've now wished you hadn't said and you've apologized. I actually think that says a lot about you, right? That shows you've got that ability to mm. be self-aware, to understand when you cross a line. I think someone like you, with all your energy and creativity and your passion, you're going to say stuff the way that you talk constantly and in such an extraordinary manner, you're going to trip up. You're going to say things the wrong way. I don't think there's anything wrong in when you do that, doing what you just did and saying, look, I'm sorry, I crossed the line, I apologise. It's actually quite empowering. Do you, you know what I think? You know what I think I'll go ahead and do? I feel that I've given the platform and I think by holding the idea of an apology hostage, 
is not godlike. Correct. I feel like we have to free. Yeah, you know, and I think that's the point that you've been making. And because we sat down and had this conversation, you know, I will say I'm sorry for the people that I hurt with the DEF CON, the, the confusion that I call. I feel mm. like I call I cause hurt and confusion. And I'm sorry for the families of the people that had nothing to do with the the trauma that I had been through and that I use my platform where you say hurt people hurt people. And I I was hurt. I was frustrated. I was frustrated that Gap hadn't opened stores. I was frustrated that I spent time with a gentleman who I love, love, love him, his wife, his kids, David Simon, and to open stores. And then he called Bob Martin at Gap and said, I'm not going to open the stores. And I've just been frustrated. I just want to open my widow stores. And I want to say that it's wrong to hold an apology hostage. Mm. And I got to let go of that and free, you know, free myself of the trauma and say, look, I'm just going to give it all up to God right now and say to those families that I hurt, you know, I really want to give you guys a big hug. And I want to, uh, I say, I'm sorry for hurting you with my comments. And I want to word it and not a pres and not in like a political way, but in a presidential way, which means wh wh what I knew a president to be when I was growing up in a sincere way. You know how people give those kind of, I want to give an apology and you're like, but did you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it has to be, I want to go to every person's grandmother and grandfather and every person's son and daughter, aunt and uncle and give them a hug and say, you know what, I've been hurt and I do want you to talk to your boys. I do want you to talk to the people that are in power, the people who do own the black voice, the people who do own the black voice, the vote, which a lot of Jewish business people do. And I, I want to be able to sit at the table with the contracts. I want my people to sit at the table with the contracts. I do want all of this, but I'm not going to hold my apology hostage till I get that. I'm going to start by taking accountability for my actions and the lack of sophistication in my wording. Like I said, I was sleepy and it was taken in, in a way that I didn't mean to, me, to be taken. It definitely caused some attention, but I don't want the conversation to go away just because I came to you guys and said, you know, I understand how I hurt you and I'm sorry for the pain that I've caused and the confusion that I caused. Now that is said, right? But I don't want the conversation to go away that we are still in a place where these contracts are still <laughs> up. My people are still getting screwed. This has to be opened up and I'm not asking for a promise. But it would be a beautiful world as as I release the pain that I've caused <clears throat> and the pain that I have in me, that grudge that I was holding, that you guys, some of you guys, one, two of you guys step up and say, let's look at these contracts. Let's make it not be a known fact mm. that the music industry is treacherous. Let's make the because my kids and my kids do music. You know, I don't want them to step into a treacherous place. I want it to be better for them than it was for me. So I want us to sit down and come together and really work on that. Would, did, would that make sense to you, Pierce? You know what, Yay? If you'd simply said that in your tweet, yeah. I don't think there would have been any problem. And I'm very, very pleased, actually, that we've got to a place where you felt able yeah. to say that. And I think it was sincere. And but we I, still have I a problem. That's my point. No, no, I get, I get it. I get it. But what you've now done, you've now explained the context of the problem. And you also issued a sincere apology to people who were rightly offended by the way you phrased what you said. So I think that's a, that's a good place to finish the interview. And I, I'm very glad you got there. OK, but it's not finished. The I understand. The idea is not finished. I understand. That there's, that there's still a problem. I understand. No one's going to be in any doubt there's a problem. And by the way, I'm sure there is. I'm sure that a lot of the contracts in the music business are rigged against what, people you, uh, <clears throat> like, like artists like yourself. I'm sure of it. I mean, it's always been the case from Elvis Pierce, onwards. So I, I get Pierce, it. Would you, would you, would you help me and my people? Would you help me and my my athletes? I got so many athletes that go to my school that mm. are 
like all the guys that are on Donda are headed to the NBA, right? Could you help me? Could you help us make these contracts better for our people by call calling attention, by just allowing me on your platform, right? And let's look at some of the things and point these things out. Could could we work together on Absolutely that? Absolutely happy to of years? very happy because, to do that. Yeah. Very yeah. happy to do that. I think we should talk more often. All right. It's taken a long time to get here. I've All thoroughly right. enjoyed our conversation. It's been two hours. It's been free rolling. It's been occasionally challenging. But we've got to a place where I think uh, is a good place. And I've really enjoyed it. So thank you very much indeed, Jay, for sparing me the time. Yeah. You know, you know I'm going to feel like I, lo I, I lost my stone I was holding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but but I but I had to give it up to God. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. Uh, you know, you, you're gonna be bragging. You're gonna be bragging at dinner tonight. Like, yo, I talked to Yay. No one could do it. No one could do it. I did it. <laughs> and you know, I'm 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 giving you this, and I'm gonna pray that you, as a fellow uh, believer in Christ, will help me to expose all the wrong that's still currently happening. To my people, specifically in the entertainment industry, because I, I'm honestly, an I'm very happy. To start with. I'm uh, very happy to hold anyone mm. to account who is behaving improperly. Honestly, and I'm I'm absolutely certain that that entertainment business is riddled with people who try it on and exploit people. And I would be very happy to help you to expose that. Uh, but for now, I've got to leave it. Yay! We've had two hours. It's been remarkable. Thank you very much for your time. Peace. Black Barbie Golden Girl. Golden Girls got the naked truth. No fake tea over here. Believe that. Baby. Just the naked truth.